Hi, I'm Tiffany. And I'm Rihanna, and welcome or welcome back to Fresh Off the Broke. Fresh Off the Broke is about personal experiences growing up Asian American in a predominantly white community, Asian media, and Asian pop culture in general. Race has always been a sensitive topic, every day that debates over race. With our podcast, we intend to shed light on the experiences of first generation Asian immigrants, not put them on a pedestal. We understand that race isn't everything, but there should be an acknowledgement of people of color, the knowledge gap, and the racial divide that will ideally be broken. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the episode. Today's topic is Asian prodigies. Depending on who you are, you have either started a new semester or are just finishing up your first semester. And maybe you've already actually encountered an Asian prodigy. No, I've just been trying to stay afloat. So maybe I have. I don't. Th- I don't think. Well, obviously I've encountered them on the news, but I don't think I've ever been in a class with an Asian prodigy. According to Google, a prodigy is a person, especially at a young age, um, endowed with exceptional qualities or abilities. And similar words include child genius and wonder child i've never heard of wonder child before (laughs) that sounds like i'm thinking wonder pet and wonder woman me too i i I feel conflicted comment down below if you know what wonder pets is (laughs) wonder pet wonder pet we're on our way Finish, if you can finish the line, write it down in the comments. Okay? Got it. <laughs> so, this phenomenon or this idea of an Asian prodigy, I mean, prodigies exist everywhere. Well, not ev- not everywhere, but <laughs> anywhere. And so, this idea of an Asian prodigy is kind of just an image, per se, that uh, it's kind of complicated because on the news and in the media you always see a story about a five-year-old Asian who can play Mozart or a two-year-old Asian notice that just keeps getting younger yeah a two-year-old Asian that can I don't know write like Shakespeare or a two-month-old getting accepted into Harvard yeah it was me. I was the two month old. Congrats, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. I not to not to flex, but that's actually not my biggest achievement. <laughs> that was uh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Anyways, as we talk about this idea of Asian prodigies and what I said about prodigies being found anywhere. A lot of this ties into the mono-minority myth, then with the mono-minority myth, it's perpetuating the idea that Asians are all naturally smart. And I know what that sounds like. Someone might think, okay, that's that's just saying you're smart. It's not, are you you annoyed? Or why, I don't see why you would feel bad about that. Mm -hmm. But no, it's not, it's not like that. It really isn't. It ma- it makes it so that there's there's resentment among marginalized groups, and it is, I mean historically it was it was a way to pit put Asian people above other people that wanted other groups that wanted to immigrate because they were saying like oh they could they were only taking people that made a certain amount or only, and then it turned into this thing where it's like oh well Asian people can get decent paying jobs then why don't you other people do this and so this whole thing about Asian prodigies the reason why even the term Asian prodigies exists I mean have you heard of there's always an Asian better than you yeah it's kind of the same thing it's just this image of or I guess I don't want to say a world of people but there's a whole identity or there's just 
a realm of the new that are just like that people have been exposed to mm-hmm. with prodigy stories, but it's just talking about Asian people. Mm-hmm. The way that Asian prodigies are portrayed in the media spreads a false narrative and enables comparison within families, the Asian community, and in between communities as well. Right. And when we say spreads false narratives, we don't necessarily mean that we're not saying that these people aren't prodigies or that they're fake or anything of that nature. It's more that I mean, when you, if you think about it, sure, there's prodigies of all kinds that are featured on the news, but it just seems like Asian ones are always highlighted more, or is there just an oversaturation? People always, mm-hmm. I mean, why do people make jokes saying, oh, another Asian prodigy, or oh, there's always an Asian better than you? Mm-hmm. Where do you think these things came from? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I personally feel like I see an Asian prodigy story maybe this is an exaggeration but it feels like once a week yeah and there's, and I mean there's even the joke oh don't let my mom see this mm-hmm. don't, don't show my parents mm-hmm. do you I mean I we've talked about this before in previous episodes have you ever seen articles of Asian prodigies and felt, damn, I hope my parents don't see this? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I can't think of an example off the top of my head. Oh, yeah. But again, like, it's because there's a lot that I'm thinking of, or like, they've just merged into a whole category that I've almost even blocked out from my memory, because I'm like, I don't want to remember this to constantly compare myself, you know? Oh, yeah. And have you ever had them come up to you after seeing an article or a video or something like that? Oh, boy. (laughs) What a question. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Uh Huh? No comment. Just yes. (laughs) Oh. That's that's interesting. That's an interesting answer. (laughs) What about you? I'm intrigued, <laughs> but I will not, I will not pry. For me, it's, let me think about it. Yes, to both. Yeah, I've seen, I mean, my, even if I hope my parents don't see it, they usually do, because my parents are very obsessed with, the news app that they have on their phones they have mm-hmm. they have these chinese news apps and they just scroll on them all the time they're my <laughs> it's always so funny when they do the whole oh this younger generation is obsessed with their phones but then i think i don't think i'm the one of them with my phone <laughs> yeah yeah so and in terms of them bringing up stories it's usually I would say my mom more likely to do it than my dad mm. and she'll say oh have you have y'all heard about this or, oh I saw this on my on my uh knew that this, this five-year-old or this whatever age kid is doing this and I was like oh, okay <laughs> great oh that's great I mean I'm happy for them I'm not happy you saw it. Yeah, no. Yeah. When your parents come up to you about a prodigy or whatever, do they directly just say, "Oh, look at this prodigy. Why, why aren't you that prodigy?" Or will, like, how, how do they go about the um, situation? It's very like, "Oh, look at this kid." Yeah. Judging by the tone, I see. <laughs> <laughs> There's no explicit line, mm-hmm. but it's there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mine do something kind of similar. It's much more passive aggressive. They'll say stuff like, "They're oh wow, that's, you know, obviously oh wow, that's so cool." Blah, blah. 
but but they'll say stuff like involving their parents they'll say oh their parents must be so proud or oh wow oh, like to God. be now like, okay that's a little messed up a little i don't I mean, no one is it not technically your fault yeah that i'm not a prodigy or that you didn't give birth to a prodigy yeah. what do you mean oh their parents must be so proud or if I don't know, it must it must be exciting or interesting to be their parents. And I mean, I'm sure it must be exciting and interesting. But why did you say it? Just the tone and the wording and everything. Because you and I, you and I are saying it in English, but do you think that do your parents ever speak Tagalog to you at home? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, just wanted to confirm that I yeah, didn't yeah. just make that up. No, they say in my head. Me, but like I answer in English type uh-huh. of thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so we're talking about this in English, but they don't exactly they say things differently. <laughs> we're just translating in a way where it's simpler. Yeah. And so if you just uh, gosh. It really is kind of messed up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why would they say that? Well, wait, wait. They, I mean, they want to have a prodigy, they can try. Yeah. I'm not a prodigy. We've, we've been new. It's too late. I think if, if there was a scientific study on prodigies, you know how they say, oh, you show signs of something at the age of whatever. Mm-hmm. After, after the age of, I don't know. If, if a child doesn't show any signs of being a prodigy, maybe they're not. Yeah, no. Maybe just give it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. And, I mean, we've talked about this a lot, but just in general, it just caused this whole... compare. I mean, it adds to the comparison, because it's already, the, oh, look at your cousin, look at your this and that, and look at this random person on TV, look at this celebrity. Yeah. It's... And it's not the prodigy's fault. No, it's not. For being a prodigy, it's not. And also, like, the prodigy is usually, like, a four-year-old. Like, <laughs> they yeah. literally cannot help it. Like, yeah, they're a, a prodigy. <laughs> yeah, it's not It's not their fault. It's, it's, the, it's the media and then the way lots of guardians choose to process that information. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, like, maybe this is just how I see it, but especially Asian prodigies in the media, they're so dehumanized. Like, they're portrayed to be, like, these robots that are just, like, made, and then all of a sudden they're excelling in this. Yeah, I totally agree. It just doesn't feel... It isn't not healthy at all. No. <laughs> yeah. It it does raise a concern, for sure. Mm-hmm. One of the first prodigies we've ever heard of online slash one of the reasons why we even thought to do this podcast or this episode, I mean, is none other than Daniel Liu. I'm sure you guys have seen him or heard of him. He, very famous meme. Yes, very. He went viral in 2016 at age 11. The ripe old age of 11 years. Is that what makes him a prodigy? Yeah. He was viral at 11. Yeah, he's actually, yeah, a prodigy for being viral. No. So he went viral in 2016 for studying at the University of Toledo. The tweet that went viral reads, This kid is 11 and in my organic, organic chemistry class, he said if we have questions to just email him. And it's just a picture of Daniel sitting in what I assume to be a lecture hall, and he's smiling. Very cute, if you ask me. Oh, for sure. I, I'd be kind of embarrassed, not gonna lie. Not embarrassed to be him. I mean, embarrassed, because is it an on-level course? Yes, but this kid is here. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> therefore, I'm dumb. <laughs> 
Also, just the fact that he said that if they have questions to email him. Mm -hmm. He he already knew. Yeah. That he was ahead. Yeah. I admire that. He was self-aware in a sense. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know I'm above (laughs) y'all. Honestly, I might have just emailed him. I feel like he could explain it. Yeah, and I mean, even if he couldn't, I'm sure he would be the type to take a picture or show you how to do it or how he did it. Mm-hmm. When I when I first saw this picture, I didn't, I mean, when we were talking about this, when we were planning for the episode, I remember the two of us, we both thought, or we both remembered him to be younger than 11. Mm-hmm. I thought he was six or something, which would be insane. Yeah, that's not <laughs> why. Six, how? A six year old in university. We say that, and I'm afraid that's going to happen. But honestly, though, like, 11 is incredibly young. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Like, People in, I don't even, I don't know what year. Of, I don't know if this is the first year course or a second year course, but if it's the first year course, I mean, everyone there is 18, that's seven years different. Yeah. That's, that's And if it's a higher level course, then that's even crazier. Yeah, good for him, honestly. Yeah, because they didn't say, oh, this kid is a, is a first year. I mean, this kid is new to our first year class. Mm-hmm. That's interesting, actually. I wonder what level course this was. You could, I guess, like, you could maybe say it's one of the, like, lower years, because organic chemistry, I feel like the higher of a year course, the more specific it is, and organic chemistry is pretty, pretty, like, general, I would say. Agreed. Then again, I don't know if this person just said organic chemistry. So they that didn't, have, didn't have to say the long name. Yeah, that's true. Let's, let's just go with maybe it was a lower year. Because yeah. I've never seen it specified in an article. And yeah. if someone has, feel free to send it over. Yeah. Because we didn't, that's not a piece of information we came across. And I mean, we know that as of, I'm pretty sure as of right now, or, or as of recently, uh, Daniel is actually a researcher at the university still. Um, and he was actually too young to actually be like a researcher. And a bit too short. <laughs> yeah, and too short. You have to be over 18. But his parents signed a permission form. So he is able to be a researcher. Damn. But again, that doesn't really give us any age, like, or, like, level, year level. In 2022, he would be 17, but researcher, so, wait, 11 to 17, that's about six-ish. Mm-hmm. Depending on how how far into eleven he was and how yeah. far into seventeen he is now, yeah, that's interesting. Cause ten four, I mean, I we don't know how many years of first. I'm not first, uh, undergraduate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, and then, it's cool though, cause if you search up his name, you get like actual papers that he's like written slash like co-written or been a part of it's crazy oh, yeah yeah it's so funny how the the person he's under for research is saying like they were they weren't sure if it was a good idea hmm. because he's a kid but he's he's adjusting well so i appreciate that not I mean, I appreciate him adjusting well, but that's not something that I need to... I mean, like, I appreciate that they factored in the part that he was a kid. Mm-hmm. Also, we have Lab some... Safety, links. yes. We have some links in our uh, description for him. There's a nice little video of him with sunglasses on. 
Um, Y'all should watch that. But yeah, we are incredibly impressed. This kid, I would say this kid is going places, but he's been at places. He, he's been there. He's been he's there at, and done that. He's at all the places. Similar to how Daniel attended university at a young age, we have a few similar cases over here in Canada. So first off, we have Maddie Zhang, who attended, well, began her studies at U of T at around the age of 14 and then graduated at the age of 18 around two years ago. And she was a member of the Faculty of Engineering. And now, <laughs> very, very quickly, that record was beaten. She, Maddie was originally the youngest person to graduate from U of T, but then last year, Vivian Shed graduated at the age of 16. <laughs> And she was the youngest person to graduate from the University of Toronto's Faculty of Arts and Sciences in at least 40 years. Jeez. Yeah. And she did a double degree in cell and molecular biology and biology. I, yes, I, I, know, what it, I know it sounds like I just said the same thing, but... It's, it's kind of complicated the way degree programs are sometimes. I think mm -hmm. biology was probably something more general, and then oh, yeah, yeah. cell and molecular biology was a... Specialized in a way. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's complicated. Sometimes you'll just, there'll just be things that sound completely different but are the same things and then the things that sound exactly the same or very similar but then they're very different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay <laughs> it was it was like just yesterday that i had heard about maddie and then immediately someone graduates two years younger yeah i hadn't even digested i remember i think it was, I mean, I found out about Maddie the year that she graduated because it was an impressive feat. Of course, it was, everyone knew about it. Mm -hmm. And then just last year, I remember I would, I would see it on Instagram about uh, Vivian graduating. And then my parents would see it on WeChat and go, yo. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it, it was, let's just say that, and this is nothing against Vivian or Maddie or any anyone, but let's just say that Vivian's graduation photo or her headshot is ingrained in my mind. <laughs> I've seen it too many times. And that's including me having to see it when we were doing research for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean even just thinking about it like when we were 16 I can't even imagine graduating from university let alone being in university before being 16 yeah Vivian started when she was 12 which means she was just a year older than Daniel it boggles my mind Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even though I fully cannot imagine myself being un in university at 16, or graduating university at 16, um, that is a personal, personal thing. And it's not necessarily a bad thing for people to, quote-unquote, fast forward their learning or anything, if that's what's the correct choice for them. I know, personally, I wouldn't be able to handle it but I'm like obviously these people can handle it I mean look at them mad props honestly yeah for sure I mean these people it wouldn't make sense 
to purposely hold them back in any way. I think, I mean, that just shows like, well, I don't see why an 11 year old would be in it for the money. Like what can an 11 year old, what does an 11 year old The grind want? never stops and it has always started. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but like his grind is was like born with the grind. Yeah. His <laughs> grind is like, I'm gonna make this bag and then I'm gonna like well, again, we're making assumptions, but it would be funny if it was like, I'm gonna make this bag at my research job and then go home and play Fortnite <laughs> or like buy some Robux. Like <laughs> it's really cute. That's a funny image. Yeah, like I'm gonna go like break boundaries in the science world and then like buy an expansion pack on sims 4 or whatever <laughs> like <laughs> i mean in a sense in a way that's kind of realistic not not the the bag thing we were talking about <laughs> the chasing the bag and the grind thing <laughs> but him working at his research job or doing all these things and then going home and maybe playing Fortnite because mm -hmm. he's a kid mm -hmm. again like realistically based on the fact that he's clearly doing this because he likes it I have a feeling he probably doesn't care all that much about like Fortnite or Roblox or all that but what if Daniel Liu is listening to this and then he comes over saying Yo, that's well, why are you why are you saying that? That's my favorite game. <laughs> I apologize. I mean, I guess that does have several implications about the IQ of people who play for. <laughs> that's not what I'm trying to say. You're you're coming for many d people now. I stand by it, I guess. <laughs> but Daniel, if you're listening, you do play Fortnite and you do enjoy it. I apologize. You are, you have achieved so what many you things. like playing Minecraft. I, Vivian likes playing uh, Minecraft. Minecraft doesn't, is not equal to Fortnite. No, that's, that's not what I said. I just mean like game. Well, what, game, what, 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 what are we, what are we getting about here? Daniel plays Valorant? <laughs> like maybe he does. Maybe he does. <laughs> Let it's us know, Daniel. Fortnite. Fortnite is the one game that I'm like. You're, you're the one that brought up Fortnite. Well. I, you're going to have to take that responsibility. Yeah, I will now be going back and bleeping every single time I say Fortnite. <laughs> I mean, That's a lie. I'm not doing that. That's a new bleep. You just gave yourself something to bleep by saying it again. The point that I'm trying to make is that at the end of the day, these people are still children, or I guess some of them technically aren't. They are very young, and it is very important to be a kid and be your own age. Again, there are lots of studies done on people who, you know, grew up too fast, and we all know that that does not end well. Mm -hmm. And if you see it happen with child yeah. stars, yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, <laughs> there is a lot of stress on these kids, or just expectations for them to be at a certain level. And even though they are prodigies, they are still children. Oh, of course. And I mean, there's this whole pressure of reaching or fulfilling this potential that they have mm -hmm. because they are prodigies and I mean they could oh, there's pros and cons to being very successful at a young age mm -hmm. because for some people they just continue being so like it just keeps it just, if, if it was a, a line chart, it would just be exponentially going, like just exponent, like, well, exponentially <laughs> increasing. Mm -hmm. But then for some people, sometimes 
maybe it stops at 20 and then they just have in a sense a midlife crisis because Mm -hmm. their brain they had already skipped those steps Mm -hmm. and they don't know what they're doing Mm -hmm. yeah like you said like they need to be in an environment that pushes their potential but there needs to be a balance Mm -hmm. you can't just be like expecting them to do work and essentially be an adult yeah and they don't just because they're gifted in a given field or subject doesn't mean that they have like just just because they have the understanding that a I don't know 30 year old would have of organic chemistry that doesn't mean that they have a 30-year-old grasp on the economy or social skills, those things should still be taught to teach them how to do their taxes. Yeah. Do the, and uh, I think it's super important. I, I don't know if there are parents of prodigies listening to us right now, but I think it's super important that there is, like you said, a balance. And for example, oh, I don't know, after they do their homework or something, maybe we can watch a movie. Maybe, let's, maybe I don't go on a play date. Mm-hmm. Like, and that also, um, what's the word? That applies to parents of non-prodigies as well. Like, your child can be very smart, not necessarily a prodigy, but your child can be in all these like extracurriculars and extra classes, and they may be very book smart. However, you still need that balance. They are still a child. You can't expect them to be a prodigy. Mm-hmm. For sure. And to extend that, if your if your kid isn't book smart and isn't a prodigy also that you of course can push for them to to learn or practice certain things or all things in a sense mm-hmm. but that's not to say that you should just make it their life mm-hmm. and make it this intense mission that they become a prodigy or they just become all these things because that's not what they are right now and they have to be Mm -hmm. that and it's education is super important but it's it's not about just being that top one that the so the parents can project I don't their failures on their children Mm -hmm. or if their kid is a prodigy that it's not you vicariously living through your kid that's not Mm -hmm. that's not what this is about it it should never be about that yeah yeah it just listen to what we're saying your kid (laughs) your kid we're licensed professionals no we're not this is not (laughs) we're not licensed professionals at all we are we are two we are we are two girls sitting here yeah but I mean like Imagine, like, how many years has that child been on Earth and you are expecting so much of them? Mm -hmm. They have barely experienced anything. Like, (laughs) it blows my mind. Yeah, what if they just want to play Fortnite? (laughs) Yeah. Obviously, there is a balance again, but... (laughs) Let kids be kids, man. Yeah. Well, with that said, thanks for tuning in today. We, we hope you learned something or gained some interesting insight. And feel free to leave a comment down below. Have you heard of Daniel Liu? Did you, have you seen Vivian's graduation photo? There's nothing wrong with it. It's just ingrained in my, in my head. It's a very nice photo. Yeah. But it's ingrained in my head because I, I saw it a good 50 times. During the time that she graduated, leave a comment down below if you are Vivian or Maddie or Daniel, Daniel. or another 
child prodigy. Imagine a child prodigy or a, a prodigy in general comments and says, why didn't you guys talk about me? Yeah, let us know. We'll talk why about did, you. Why didn't y'all leave us out? <laughs> we'll talk about you. We'll, you're invited. Part two. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. If you're a child prodigy and you want, and you would like to be on the podcast, we'd be happy to interview you. Mm -hmm. Very. Yeah. This is a welcoming environment. It is. Yeah. Also, comment down below if you like Fortnite. Oh, God. I Easy you... block list. Rihanna. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I will have a, uh, a civilized discussion about Fortnite. No, like Rihanna, you know, you're just... What? This is not a time to be arguing with children about Fortnite. Oh, no. I mean, not children. If you are a grown adult and you play Fortnite, or not a child necessarily, but old enough to not be playing Fortnite, and yet you still play Fortnite... Leave a comment down below if you, if, if you think Rihanna has some very interesting vendetta towards... Did something happen? I think people agree with me. Well, I'm not saying that I love... I've never played it. I, I me just neither. I think it's interesting that throughout this episode, we've come to learn that there's animosity. There is. I stand by it. You know what? I, I Now I really hope Daniel doesn't play Fortnite. <laughs> You're blowing your shot. Again, Daniel, if you're listening and you play Fortnite, I take it back. You've said so much. It doesn't apply to Daniel. <laughs> All right. Man is out here making research papers. He can play a little Fortnite. So, so that's what it takes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know what? It's fair. Thank you. And leave a comment down below if you've met a prodigy maybe your friends with one or you were friends with one what was it like i imagine if you were close friend i mean it depends on the type of family you have but if you were close friends with a prodigy your parents would probably or your guardians would probably compare you all the time to them right it would be hard well, and it wouldn't... No, that's not what I'm trying to say. I, I... It would be hard to not have that always floating over your head or just... Oh, yeah. Zooming over your head. So let us know. Yeah. Did that happen? Did, you, did it loom over your head? Did it not loom over your head? We would love to know guys like this episode and want to stay connected with us check out our website in the description it contains links to our streaming platforms such as spotify anchor apple podcasts and more follow us for more behind the scenes content announcements and other random things we decide to put on there for example if we met any of the prodigies yeah and then nudge <laughs> say hello wink wink Brush off the rug on all platforms. <laughs> Don't hesitate to reach out. Yes. Alright, see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>